Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brett Jash, a teacher at Pender Harbour Secondary, and on behalf of everyone involved with this year's Pender Harbour Secondary School graduation, I would like to welcome you to this afternoon's ceremony and celebration. We would like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded territory of the Seashot Nation. I would also like to take this moment to welcome some honoured guests who will be featured in today's ceremony. School trustee, Ms. Samantha Haynes. Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Patrick Bocking. Chief Warren Paul and Counsel from the Seashelt Indian Band. MLA, Mr. Nicholas Simons. Members of the SD46 Indigenous Learning Team. Principal of Pender Harbour Secondary, Mr. Chris Lakakis. Our education system, our schooling, is a series of steps, one after the other and in sequence. First kindergarten, then elementary school, high school, electives, credits, clubs, excursions, graduation requirements, all of it, just a series of steps, all to get us here to this day. And for our graduation, oh, sorry, for our graduates, it comes down to this, just a few more steps. I would now like to introduce to you the 2021 graduating class of Pender Harbour Secondary School. The processional will be led by RCMP Colour Guard, Constable Nicole Hall. Ryan McCormick. Candlelighters, Lulu Camely, Megan Callawatt. Ryan will be moving to Vancouver in the fall and taking a gap year. He'll be working in construction and honing his building skills during this time. Evan Williamson, Candlelighter, Matthew Phillips. This summer, Evan will be attending the Animation Fundamentals course at Cap U and plans to go into the animation industry. Evan would like to thank all his teachers here at PHSS who have helped him get through the last five years. And a special thanks to Mr. Jash and Mr. Stoddard for showing Evan how to apply his creativity. Evan is also responsible for the design of our backdrop this afternoon. Nolan Johnson. Candlelighter, Charlene Johnson. Nolan thanks his sister for being the best sister a brother could have. Nolan's future plans are to be a heavy duty mechanic. The classes that most influence Nolan are workshop and being in Anna's office helping build furniture and working, making all the staff smile. The staff always remember Nolan eating all the food in the staff room. In fairness, he didn't eat all of it. Nolan's abilities with cars are beyond compare. The only thing more persistent is the grease on his hands that he has to wash off. Jordan Jinx, Candlelighter, Talia Jinx. Jordan is accompanied by his sister and Candlelighter, Talia. He's gonna take a gap year and is on track to go to school for biology and natural resource science. Jordan would like to thank his mum, Tanya, and her dedication for helping him get through school, and would also like to thank Mr. Jash for being so supportive and a reason to go to school. Jordan always asked great questions in class, perhaps not so much how he phrased those questions, but the intent behind them was always interesting. Sarah Goldrup, Candlelighter, Jonathan Goldrup. Sarah will be entering the Humanities Program at the University of Victoria in the fall to pursue a psychology degree. She would like to thank all the staff and community members for being supportive to her over the years, with special thanks to Mr. Jash for putting up with all her new ideas. 
Sarah's organisational skills are beyond human. The yearbook this year would not exist without her. Cheyenne Abinet, Candlelighter, Elizabeth Doyle. Cheyenne would like to say thank you to Mr. Stoddard for always helping her and pushing her to do better. She'll be taking a gap year and then going to UVic to study psychology. Cheyenne has been a fixture of the seminar space all year, constantly working towards her graduation. Jacob Thornton, Candlelighter, Annie Vesev. Jacob wishes to thank everyone who helped him along the way. Thank you to the teachers, the EAs, family and friends, and his girlfriend Annie, and everyone else along the way. Jacob is looking forward to going out into the world, graduating and succeeding in life. For Jacob, there's yet to be a truck that he can't wrangle into shape, or in this case, two trucks into one shape. Jake Roberts, Candlelighter, Riley Roberts. Jake Roberts is accompanied by his Candlelighter and brother, Riley. Jake has been an integral part of the school, being the announcements reader for many years now. Jake has been working towards getting into the BCIT radio and entertainment program for the past few months and has successfully been accepted. Jake would like to thank all the teachers and staff members who have driven him to succeed. He would like to give special thanks to Mr. Jash for teaching him several new forms of art and to Mr. Stoddard, who has helped bolster his creativity and his interest in writing. Jake will remember everyone who has helped him all these years. He will especially remember his friends, those who helped him along, and those who pushed him through the hard times to get to this graduation. It's been a blast. And please remember, no phones, hats, or spell castings of any time during the ceremony. Kaylee Charlton, Candlelighter, Grace Suze Donaghy. Kaylee wishes to thank her friends, family, and the staff. She'll be taking a gap year and has plans on attending the university in 2022. Along with Evan, Kaylee painted the wonderful backdrop you see today. She brings such creativity to everything she works on. Tegan Kosh. Candlelighter, Tom Badley. Tegan is off to Emily Carr University this fall to study illustration and storyboarding to earn her Bachelor's of Fine Arts. She'd like to thank her mom for helping her with her university applications and Mr. Jash for all his encouragement and help in making her portfolio. It's hard to express in words just how hard Tegan worked on that portfolio for entry into art school.
please welcome our graduating class of 2021. I would now like to call upon Penda Harbour Secondary School graduate Jake Roberts to lead us in the singing of O Canada. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide O oh canada we stand on guard for thee God keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on God for thee. O Canada, we stand on God for Thank you, Jake. To start things off, I would like to introduce the District Indigenous team and members of the Seashell Indian Band who will perform a welcoming song for us. Uh, congratulating our, our, all our graduates right from the preschool to high school and university. Uh, sharing our Sishas welcome song to welcome you to our Shisha Swia. Also, the, after that, we'd like to share our Shisha honor song to pay the highest honors to the wonderful work that you all did in your school year. Uh, acknowledging our dear singers and relatives that are here singing with us here today and our at -ed staff that are standing with us to share and honor some beautiful songs with you here tonight. All no more chala, thank you. So we'll start off with our Seashot welcome song.
with the IA, congratulating you on your success, and have a good evening. Om Namo Chala, both of you. Thank you to the Seashell Indian Band. The school board would like to extend their greetings to the participants of the day. I would like to introduce our district school board trustee, Ms. Samantha Haynes. Wow, what a year it has been. You should all be very proud of yourselves. You have successfully navigated through a very difficult year, a year filled with deep, dark places. The pandemic has changed our world, our communities, and your education. We have seen pain, hardship, and social isolation. But today, today we see the light. This light lives inside each and every one of you. I see it on your faces, in the hearts of your families and your friends. Your futures are bright, shining light in the darkest of places. Graduating high school is a huge accomplishment. And while you may think that your educational journey is ending, the truth is it's only the beginning. Whether you choose to go to post-secondary school or not, stay home or travel, I encourage you to never stop learning, exploring, and challenging yourself. In Chris Hatfield's children's book, The Darkest Dark, we learn about an aspiring astronaut that is afraid of the dark. But it is in this darkness that he learns to dream big and reach for the stars. And so I leave you with the words of Chris Hatfield, the dark is for dreams, and the morning is for making them come true. Congratulations, grads. Keep reaching for the stars. Thank you, Ms. Haynes. We have greetings from our superintendent. I would like to introduce School District 46 Superintendent, Mr. Patrick Bocking. I am so glad to be here to celebrate your graduation with you tonight. And anytime I come to Pender Harbor, I always remark on what an amazing family it is. And it's not just the family that's here this year, it's a multi-generational thing where people have come to Madeira Park and then Pender Harbor as a part of their family culture and part of their family history. This place is integral to the history and the culture of this community. Sometimes graduates wonder whether they're actually ready for the next steps. Many of you are going to go on to workplaces, to training, to university, perhaps to travel, take a gap year, and you might still be figuring out exactly what that is. But the important thing to remember is that you are incredibly well prepared as students who have graduated from a British Columbia high school, and Pender Harbor in particular. You've got the most remarkable teachers who have guided you to be the very best that you can be. You work within a community that loves you and supports you every step of the way. And wherever you go from this point, this will always be home to you, always a place where you can say, I graduated from Pender Harbor Secondary School with my community, and I'm being successful because of it. So graduates, I know that your families and your community is incredibly proud of you. I'm very proud of you and very excited to know through the coming years about where your dreams will lead you. Thank you so much. Have a great day and a great future. Thank you, Mr. Bocking. The Minister of Education and the Ministry would like to extend greetings to all our graduates and to all of us this afternoon. Presenting on behalf of the Minister of Education and the Ministry, our local MLA, Mr. Nicholas Simons. First of all, congratulations to all grads this year. A wonderful accomplishment and a bright future ahead for everyone. I'd also like to thank everyone involved in being part of the school year this year. And this is the administrators, the teachers, the staff, and everyone who supported you through this unusual year. The commitment people have made to ensure that 
the best could be made of a difficult situation is to be commended. And on behalf of the Premier and of the people of the province, we're very proud of the accomplishments of students all across the province. I'm particularly pleased that Gibsons and the students on the Sunshine Coast uh, demonstrate once again their ability to get through difficult times together. And I hope that everyone recognizes the efforts that have been made by other British Columbians to ensure that we're safely through this difficult time with resilience and confidence in the future. So thank you to parents, grandparents, siblings, aunts and uncles, foster parents, step parents, and everyone who's been an integral part of your success. I wish you all the best and good luck. Thank you, Mr. Simons. At this time, I would like to introduce Chief Warren Paul and the Seashell Indian Band Council members to send their graduation wishes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Corey August, Council Member of the Seashell Nation. On behalf of Chief and Council and the Education Department, our hands go up to all of you graduates. Not only is grade 12 sometimes a difficult year, you did it with this virus called COVID-19 that has impacted us all. This year, we have 12 graduating from our nation here at Chat H. It is such an honor to see you battle through all the ups and downs to get through this part of your life. We wish you well in whatever lies ahead of you in your educational journey. We would like to assure you that the nation stands behind you and that the education staff is here to help support you in your next steps as each of you move into future education or employment. We would like to acknowledge the teachers as well for doing what you do as we know this year has been like no other. So whatever road you choose, we hope it is as smooth as possible but be assured not to let a speed bump stop you. Once again, congratulations to the grads of 2021, all known Chala. Thank you, Chief Warren Paul and the Seashell Indian Band. And now we have greetings from our principal, presenting Penda Harbour Secondary's principal, Mr. Chris Lakakis. Good afternoon, SD46 Trustee Haynes, Superintendent Bocking, community members, staff, parents, students, and most importantly, grads. My name is Chris Lakakis, and I have the honor and privilege of being the principal of Pender Harbor Secondary School. Every year I get really excited to complete the principal speech in this ceremony, as it allows for reflection to occur on all of the growth that I have seen in the group before us. I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge that our graduation ceremony is the school's culmination of our learning, living, and playing that has happened at PHSS, located on the unceded territory of the Shishal Nation. The ceremony provides us an opportunity to reflect on the story of your time spent here. Like any good story and a former English teacher, we need to reflect on the five W's, the who, where, what, when, why, and how things happened at PHSS during your time here. The who is easy. It's the five, ten young adults that we have in front of us in the stage. The where is here. The when varies for each of you personally, but the length of time here was impactful enough that we are able to celebrate your story today. The why, I'm not sure why you chose PHSS. It could be the flex model, maybe the growth mindset, maybe because you like riding on buses. For all I know, it could be because of the slushies at the post. Whatever the reason, we are all grateful that you did. I know saying we in an empty gym is not as impactful, but watching it on TV, you'll know what I mean. The what. So what was learned during your time here? We probably each have a different opinion on what was learned. Speaking from my perspective and my story, I've learned that we have a group in front of us that made this school better. Cheyenne, I've learned how hardworking and resilient you are and that you are tenacious in everything you do. Nolan, Jacob, and Ryan, I've learned how extremely talented you are as hands-on learners, problem solvers, and mechanics. 
that you can fix anything from cars, generators, trucks, and furniture. Evan and Tegan, your artistic and creative talents are amazing, and I thank you for sharing those gifts with the school and the community. Jake, your passion demonstrated in your performances in song and theater at the school and at the district level are inspirational, and you have really set a high bar for PHS students moving forward. Jordan, in the last five years, I learned how caring you are. I see it in your, in your interactions with your friends, and it models how friends should treat each other at school, maybe minus a colorful word or two. Kaylee, I've learned what an amazing advocate you are for your, our students. Your ability to get along and connect with all students demonstrates how trusting you are. And Sarah, I've learned what your what is. It's helping people be better. Your ability to plan, organize, and more importantly, keep people on track and motivated is inspirational. And I think most grads would agree that today is an example of that. Now, the reason I share my story in what I've seen is because of how important story is. Richard Wagamese, a famous Indigenous author, shared what has helped define what our role at PHSS is. I know that you've seen the quote before, but I wanted to reiterate it, how important a lesson it is. All that we are is story. From the moment we are born to the time we continue on our spirit journey, we are involved in the creation of the story of our time here. It is what we arrive with. It is all we leave behind. We are not things we accumulate. We are not the things we deem important. We are story, all of us. What comes to matter then is the creation of the best possible story while we are here. You, me, us, together. When we can do that and we take the time to share those stories with each other, we get bigger inside. We see each other, we recognize our kinship, and we change the world one story at a time. So thank you, class of 2021, for sharing your story with us. Your resilient nature, armed with your natural, caring, pender ability to treat everyone like family, will serve you well whether you are heading off to university, a trek around the world, a gap year, or on a fishing boat along the coast. On behalf of all the staff and students at Pender Harbor Secondary, I wish you luck in the future. Go Sakinos. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lakakis. The key of knowledge. It is traditionally passed forward from the graduating class to members of the grade 11 class in the belief that the upcoming senior class will continue the same artistic, athletic, and scholastic effort and enthusiasm in the next school year. At this time, I would like to call upon last year's recipients of the key, Sarah Goldrup and Jake Roberts, to pass on the key of knowledge to grade 11 students Holden Charlton and Amelia Sieben. Sarah and I are proud to present the key of knowledge to the grade 11 students Holden Charlton and Amelia Sieben. This key embodies the Pender Harbor spirit. By passing it on, we are entrusting that you will continue to uphold the values that came with it. Leadership, wisdom, and the promise that when the time comes, you will make a lame joke about the size of the lock it fits in. With the passing of the key of knowledge, we found it only fitting to share something we've learned with you. This next year will go by very quickly, so remember not to work yourself too hard. Take every extra moment and have as much fun as you can because those will be the moments you can look back on and smile. By receiving this key, you'll become the new leaders of our school. So make us proud and we wish you all the best. It is difficult to put this feeling into words. Nevertheless, we are very glad to deliver this speech on such an important and momentous occasion. It is a huge honor for us to receive the key of knowledge. We are deeply honored by our superiors for this recognition of our work ethic, dedication, enthusiasm, and growth mindset. We wish the graduates of 2021 on their best endeavors and hope the path they take is kind and a personal reflection of the values they hold dear. Thank you to Sarah, Jake, 
Holden, and Amelia. Traditionally, the guest speaker is chosen by the graduating class as a way of saying thank you to that person for their words of advice, wisdom, and encouragement given throughout the years. That person has played an important role in the lives of the graduates and invariably enjoys the opportunity to say a few parting things to the students at these sorts of ceremonies. The guest speaker for this afternoon is former principal at Madeira Park. Please join with the grads to welcome Mr. Barry Crangle. Good day, grads, teachers, Mr. Lakakis, Mr. Bocking, Trustee Haynes, Ms. Malman, parents, friends. I'm honored to be your speaker today. Seriously, I am really honored you asked me to be your speaker. You were in grade three when we first met, and you really haven't changed a bit other than now, I look up to you. It feels just like yesterday when I walked into the Madeira staff room only to have teachers cornering me to say, quick, Jacob is dressed like a deer and Nolan is trying to hunt him down and Jordan and Evan are in the gym jumping off scaffolding and Jake is dancing around singing, break on through to the other side, right next to Sarah G and Kaylee who have Ryan curled up in hysterics in the corner where Tegan is creating a masterpiece. Cheyenne, look at this band of characters you got to join. But really, you are the same wonderful characters who won my heart nine years ago. You make us laugh, you are full of adventure, and we share some hilarious stories. Remember all the things we did in our first ever week without walls, in our first circus? I'll never forget Jordan and Evan, perched on the scaffolding with Gerardo yelling, jump, jump, and you did, and you couldn't stop laughing. We did so many firsts together, hallway sprints, biking the seawall, when you guys hid me under Miss Gibson's desk and we scared her and she chased us down the hall. The Polar Express. Jacob saying, I'm not gonna be in the play unless I get to be a deer. So Jacob dressed up like a deer, Nolan dressed up like a hunter and chased him through the hall across the stage to roars of laughter. Jake, you drew the train we built, and it's still in the library today. The Christmas Carol, Jake and Sarah up in the balcony, and Jordan is Scrooge. So many lines, so much direction. It's always a huge risk to step on stage, because you're never quite sure if you're going to freeze, forget your lines, be stranded under the lights. That takes guts and perseverance. All these things we did, get, did together make for such great stories and memories we cherish. You see, stories have this way they can change our hearts and our minds. They can help us see each other in a different light. Our stories are what celebrates our character. And character is what I've always enjoyed about you the most. It is the stories that tie us together and make for such a memorable bond. You know how much I love stories. Well, I have one for you today that came to mind when you asked me to be your grad speaker. There was once a fella who was seeking some answers, seeking some light, inspiration, some encouragement. He was in a bad way, discouraged, disappointed, and he went and saw his friend who put his hand on his shoulders and said, do you know how long it takes for the giant Chinese bamboo to grow as tall as a building? No idea, he answered. Well, first of all, the rock-hard tiny little seed is planted and fertilized for a whole year and nothing visible happens. After two years, nothing. Three years, nothing. Four years, there's nothing visible. However, during this time, if the ground is continually watered, fertilized, tilled, that tiny little seed is developing an incredibly strong and stable root system. Roots that branch out and provide stability. In the fifth year, after all those years of watering and nurturing the soil and fertilizing, this determined little seed grows 30 meters. Can you imagine if the farmer gave up, wasn't persistent, didn't have the hope and believe in that little seed, just after four years just stopped, that little seed would have died. That invisible underground series of roots that spread out provides stability and strength. Without that five years of establishing that crucial network, the bamboo would not be able to shoot up to its full potential. 30 meters in just six weeks, that's almost a meter a day, two centimeters an hour. 
Every drop of water, ray of sun, you may not, might not see the difference right away, but there's magic happening. Your elementary teachers, Ms. Forsythe, Ms. Camerly, Ms. Gibson, Ms. Stinson, Mr. Metcalf, Ms. Moran, Mr. Nelson, Ms. Robson, Ms. Hardwick, we used to laugh at your antics and celebrate your character. It's so much about character. They believe in you. They helped establish those roots, that foundation, your friends, your coaches, your directors, your bosses, your teachers right here today celebrating your accomplishments. You have a strong network. You've been well watered and well fertilized. Your parents, your family, more than anyone, your family has provided you with love and support so are you ready to burst out of the soil just like the bamboo? But that takes determination and persistence. Like the bamboo and the farmer who nurtured it, there is no way that little sprout would grow 30 meters without determination. There's no way that seed would reach its potential without patience and care. So think about what you're willing to do to follow your dreams. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? Are you willing to push past fears, doubts, and even failure? Personally, it took me an extra year to graduate from high school. I had no idea what I was going to do. My friends all went off to college. I found school to be such a struggle, I was afraid I might fail. So I took on all sorts of jobs, crawling into tiny little spaces with a jackhammer to clean welds under the deck of a series of boats in the shipyards right under Iron Workers Memorial Bridge. I was hired because I was small and agile and I would climb in the deck in the dark, climb out in the dark, and the ships were built, I was out of a job. I ended up getting a job in a daycare center and I loved it. My best friend told me he'd never seen me so happy. He'd never heard me so excited. We talked about teaching and I said, um, that means university? I didn't think I could do it. He told me I wasn't a quitter and I should at least try. And if it doesn't work out, I'm no worse off but at least I will have tried. So I took the challenge. When I told my parents I was going off to college, they were a little shocked. My dad quoted my hero, Muhammad Ali. Well, if they can make penicillin out of moldy bread, I'm sure they can make something out of you. I had to work extra hard. When my essays and exams didn't cut it, I did extra work. I really had to grind away at times. And one year when all the student loans and grants were canceled, I was stuck without housing. I wanted to go to school, so I collected a bunch of scraps, went into the forest by the college and built a shack and lived there for a whole year. I built a shower in the trees. I had a tiny little wood stove, coal oil lamps. I was so determined to pursue my dream. Determination, perseverance, adversity, and that's good stuff. That's the kind of stuff that'll take you where you want to go. Michael Jordan, cut from the high school basketball team. Can you imagine if he was too afraid to keep trying? Steven Spielberg rejected three times from film school. Oprah fired from her first TV announcing job. Thomas Edison, teacher said he was too stupid to learn anything, he was a daydreamer. A thousand of his experiments failed, but his thousand and first experiment was the light bulb. And he went on to invite the, invent the film camera, electric lights, Winston Churchill. Failed grade six, lost every election became, until he became prime minister. Einstein did not speak till he was four years old, couldn't read until he was seven. His parents thought he was abnormal. He was expelled from school, and his teachers described him as mentally so slow, a daydreamer, and unsociable. So what did all these folks have in common? Persistence, determination, and character, just like you. They were not afraid of hard work. They were not afraid to take risks, to follow their dreams, they're not afraid to fail. Nobody plans to fail, but you must remember not to fail to plan. Dream big, but remember, dreams without goals are just dreams. They ultimately fuel disappointment. Dreams are important, but you have to have goals, life goals, daily goals, monthly goals. In order to achieve your goals, you need to be disciplined and ready to work hard, which you've already done because you're here today. Whether you go into the trades, head off to university, college, travel, take on an apprenticeship, give it 100%. If you continue to work, pursue the arts, you owe it to yourself to give it your best shot. Mark Twain said, the world doesn't owe you anything, it was here first. 
The world doesn't owe you happiness, health, prosperity, love, or respect. You are entitled to three things, however, your attitude, the opportunities you create, and the choices you make. I have a bamboo shoot for each of you. Now these are no ordinary bamboo shoots. They're full of character like you. I think that one's Jake's, that's Jordan's for sure. And when you work hard and establish a good foundation, when you're positive, kind, and have dreams, goals, and plans, you will soar to all sorts of heights. And most important, you have the very strong roots of this community, the love and respect of our community behind you. I wish you all wonderful adventures, happiness. Now go collect some stories. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Krangle. We will now be handing out the school leaving certificates with Mr. Lakakis. Cheyenne Abinet. Kaylee Charlton. Sarah Goldrup. Jordan Jinks. Nolan Johnson. Tegan Kosh. Ryan McCormick. Jake Roberts.
Jacob Thornton. Evan Williamson. Thank you to Mr. Lakakis. Oh, and grads, if you check underneath your chairs, according to our tradition, you'll find something special. Oh my gosh, it's a whole lot of nothing. Taped underneath. Wait, hang on. Hold up. Oh, I've been fooled. Oh, no. It is a high <laughs> chair. To enjoy later. Each year, Graduates who carry Indigenous ancestry are offered an eagle feather. The staff of School District 46 Indigenous Learning Program and the Indigenous community offer a cedar eagle feather as a symbol of their pride and respect for the student's educational accomplishment. The artist who created the feathers, Seashot Nation member Shane Jackson, will explain the artistic process and the meaning of the feathers. My name is Shane Jackson. Uh, I'm a member of the Shishat Nation. Uh, I also carry the name Ninewam, which is a name given to me by some of the elders in my community. Um, another name I carry is Selapam, which is a name that my great-grandfather carried, so it's an ancestral name passed down to me. I'm holding one of our Spirit Works eagle feathers. And this is a feather that's made out of cedar, which is a very sacred wood to us. We consider it uh, uh, the tree of life. So everything from uh, the clothes that we wear, our regalia, the houses we live in, even uh, the boxes we cook our food in or put our things in are all made out of cedar. So it's got a gazillion different uses, basket weaving, cooking, fires, uh, you know, the branches, uh, we use them in ceremony to brush things off. There's, uh, there's just so many things, but we've used them to create this beautiful eagle feather for you, which I believe uh, is gonna be gifted to a lot of the graduates uh, that are coming through high school now. So congratulations to you. Um, for ending this part of your life and starting, you know, an incredible new beginning somewhere. Eagle feathers in general, sometimes they're gifted to people um, who they feel um, possess certain traits related to like wisdom or excellence, or justice, um, things of that uh, magnitude. Um, this particular one I've made and to me, it not only represents just your regular eagle feather, but it actually represents, um, to me, the feather of one of our golden eagles, or our golden eagle, which is Chaskin in our language. There are many, many stories in our community about this mythical creature. If you look at the logo of our nation, you'll see a double-headed one. That's a depiction that uh, I've been taught is likened to uh, a quality. So not just between men and women, but our two spirit people as well. It represents like power and courage and prestige, but the prestige isn't based on, you know, the power and courage alone. The prestige is based on what this figure does with the power and courage. So if you listen to all the stories, they're all about this mythical creature that brings everybody together to accomplish these impossible tasks, like, you know, building a really big longhouse or bringing the salmon back. So I like to think of this feather as representing, um, you know, those types of values in us, you know, working together, coming together, taking the best of what everybody has to offer to make ourselves stronger. Um, these are teachings that you have to carry with you through life. Um, you know, I'm very thankful of the folks that have 
passed those teachings on to me. Um, so I'm hoping that these feathers will remind people a little bit about these teachings. You'll notice that on the end there are four tassels. In Salish culture, uh, the number four is a very sacred number. So it represents things like obviously four seasons, um, the four stages of life, infant, youth, adult, elder, um, and the responsibilities that come during each of those stages. Um, but more than anything, it represents the four corners and the four directions. So again, you know, um, traditionally, you know, my teachings have been that, you know, we were always welcoming uh, to people from outside because everybody would bring their strengths and their wisdom and their gifts. And then what we would do is welcome them in and we would share these gifts. And in return to their, for their gifts to us, we would offer our strengths, our wisdom, our gifts in order to make our society stronger. So when you look at these fours and the number of four, that's what you want to think of as the four directions and people that come from all these directions. I hope that everybody who's getting one of these appreciates it. We certainly love making them. So, all mumps. I would like to introduce Ms. Kerry Molman to present the Cedar Eagle Feathers. Kaylee Charlton. Nolan Johnson. Jake Roberts. Jacob Thornton. Thank you, Ms. Molman. To be chosen as the class valedictorian is an honoured bestowed upon a member of the graduating class. They are an individual selected by the school community as the student that best typifies the spirit and honest efforts of the class in general. This student speaks to the general beliefs and attitudes of their classmates and has served as a positive role model for the rest of the class. The honour of class valedictorian for the graduating class of 2021 goes to Mr. Jake Roberts. Well, 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 here we are, end of the road, final station. It's been an interesting few years working alongside these people, people I've been lucky enough to call my friends, people who I have seen grow and evolve into who they are today. I've been with all of you for many years through highs, through the highs and lows of being on the coast. To those of you who have been there for me throughout the years, I honestly can't thank you guys enough. And we've all gotten each other through our high school years, through the stresses, the lows, the oh my god, this person's so annoying. And believe me, there were a lot of those. <sighs> 
We would like to thank each and every one of the teachers and the teacher's assistants who have been there for us. Those who have helped bolster our knowledge, taught us life skills, and supported us through our high school careers. To everyone who has helped us over the years, we thank you very much. I think I speak for all of us when I say leaving high school is both exciting and insanely terrifying. The uncertainty of the future is fun to think about, and at the same time, it's horrifying to think about. What are we going to do in the future? It's fun to think, and it's also scary to think. Um, me personally, I'm going to be attending BCIT's radio and entertainment program. So if sometime in the future you think you hear my voice over the radio, there's a good chance that it is actually me. If all goes according to plan, that is. I hope that wherever my peers are going, whether it be some post-secondary education or just off on your own endeavors, seeing the world, just working a job, I wish you guys nothing but the best. I hope you find the careers you seek, meet the people you want to meet, and go the places you want to go. And on that note, to wrap it all up and tie it all together, I'll have, I have here an excerpt from a classic Dr. Seuss book, Oh, the Places You'll Go. Although, yes, this book is intended for children, I think that there are many verses that relate to real life. So the next time you choose to reread your favorite Dr. Seuss book for a nostalgic reason or just for fun, Take a, little bit take a little bit of a closer look at the subtext of the words, and you may find a deeper meaning behind the words. <clears throat> oh, the places you'll go. There is fun to be done. There are points to be scored, and there are games to be won. And the magical things you could do with that ball will make you the most winningest winner of all. Fame. You'll be famous as famous can be, with the whole, wo with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when you don't because sometimes you won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win, because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not. Alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that'll scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that will scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go, though the weather be foul. On you will go, though your enemies prowl. On you will go through the hack and cracks howl. Onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far and face many problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure with each step, Step with great care and tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. And never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot from your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. So, whether your name be Buxom, or Bixby, or Bray, or Mordecai Ali Van Allen O'Shea, you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. You all do great places. You all do great places. You all do great things. I'm just, to all of you, I leave this. Chase your dreams. You all have such potential. And if you pursue your vision, I'm certain you'll be able to reach your goal in no time. At least I hope so. Was it the doc said? 98 and 3 quarters percent? That is a pretty good percentage. So get out there and show the real world you're all. You'll all do great things, I'm sure of it. Oh, the places we will go. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. We now move on to the part of the program where the community through individuals and organizations shows their continued support of the education of our children. That is the presentation of scholarships and bursaries. The gifts, these gifts of money to the students assist parents and families who may not otherwise be able to afford the rising cost of post-secondary education and they serve as acknowledgement of the work and dedication that our students have put in at, to this point. We will now display the generous donor groups and winners of our school select and donor bursaries. Once again, on behalf of our grads, we thank you, our wonderful community members and groups, 
who help support the future of our community. With that, our program draws to a close. We will now head into the recessional of graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated as we witness our young friends making their way down the walkway to their future. Students will be leaving in the reverse order of their entrance, and notably slightly quicker because life is just waiting behind those doors. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pender Harbour graduating class of 2021, they will be led down by Constable Nicole Hall.